So let's start by understanding what a VPC is. So a VPC is a virtual private cloud, and it is a private network for you to deploy your resources in, for example, your EC2 instances. A VPC is linked to a specific region. So if you have multiple regions in AWS, you need to have multiple VPC. So here's an example. Here's my VPC that I've created. And within the VPC, we can have subnets. And a subnet is going to be a part of the VPC, so a partition of your network. And it is going to be associated with an availability zone. So here's an example. We have an AZA. And within this AZ, we're going to have, first of all, a public subnet. So this public subnet is special because it is a subnet that is accessible from the internet. As you can see on the diagram on the right-hand side, the public subnet has direct connectivity to the internet and the internet can directly reach our public subnet. Also, we can have a private subnet and a private subnet is a subnet that is not accessible from the internet. We'll see how we can define a public subnet and a private subnet later on. So to define access to the internet and access between the subnets so that the resources can communicate, we need to use route tables. So the question is, what do you put in a public subnet? Well, when we did create our EC2 instances, we created them in a public subnet. But in a public subnet, you can also put, for example, a load balancer. And in a private subnet, which we don't have when we have a default VPC, you could place your databases, for example, because they don't need access to the internet and therefore they're going to be more secure. So if we look at a VPC, a more complete one, we have the cloud of AWS, we'll have regions, within a region we'll have a VPC, and the VPC will have what's called a CIDR range, which is a range of IP addresses that is allowed within your VPC. And then the VPC can go across two or three availability zones. So we have AZ1 that contains a public subnet and a private subnet, and AZ2 which contains also a public subnet and a private subnet. So in this example, we have two AZ, one VPC, four subnets, two of them are public and two of them are private. And we can launch EC2 instances in each of these subnets. Finally, how do we define access to the internet for these subnets? Well, if we look at the same example as before, say we had an EC2 instance in a public subnet, for it to be able to access the internet, we need to create what's called an internet gateway. And this internet gateway will help our VPC instances to connect directly to the internet. So the VPC will be having an internet gateway, and then the public subnet will have a route to the internet gateway to be able to access the internet. So fairly simple, as soon as we have a internet gateway and a route to the internet gateway, that makes the subnet a public subnet. Now, if you have an instance in a private subnet, it is not going to be accessible from the internet, but you may want to give it access to the internet. For example, to get updates for your operating system or to download files. So for this, we can create what's called a NAT gateway, which is managed by AWS, or a NAT instance, which is self-managed, and that will allow your instances in your private subnet to access the internet while remaining private. So concretely, we create a NAT gateway or NAT instance in our public subnet, and we create a route from the, power, from the private subnet to the NAT gateway, and from the NAT gateway to the internet gateway. And this will allow your private subnet to get internet connectivity. So that's it for the theory. Now I will just show you in the console what's the default VPC and what is created for us. So let's go in the console of the VPC. So I'll type in VPC. And as I mentioned, when we did create our account, there was a default VPC created for us. So this is what we observe from here. We have one VPC, three subnets, one root table, and one internet gateway. So first, let's have a look at the VPC. So if we look at the VPC, we can see that this VPC is available. And we get the CIDR, which corresponds to the IP range of that VPC. So if you want to know what this means, you go to CIDR XYZ, which is a website. And on this website, you're going to enter the CIDR you see here. So 172 dot, and then we have 310016. So 310016. And then 16. And this shows you the kind of addresses range we're going to get. So the first IP is 172.31.01. And the last IP is 172.31.255.254. Uh, and we get about 65,000 IP in this entire range. So this is why when we've been creating EC2 instances in our default VPC, the private IP were within the range shown below. Okay, great. So we have our VPC. And so far, it's good. We have one CIDR block. We could add more if you wanted to. Next, we want to look at the subnets. 
So for this, we go to subnets and we open this as a new tab. And we can see that three subnets are created for us in our VPC. So each subnet corresponds to a specific availability zone. So for example, this subnet right here is for EU West 1A. This subnet right here is for EU West 1B. And this subnet right here is for EU West 1C. And within each subnet, we get a different IPv4 CIDR. So if we look at this one, for example, for EU West 1A, it is the same as before, but slash 20. So if we go to this website and do slash 20, we can see what is the first IP and what is the last IP. And then again, this is a subset of everything we had from before. So if we go back into our VPC, uh, our subnets, excuse me, and then look at this CIDR right here. So this is a new CIDR, it's 0.16.0. So we'll copy this and paste it and it shows you again the first IP and the last IP. So we can have multiple subnets, they're partitions within our VPC. And each subnet in this example has 4,091 available IPv4. So if we launch an EC2 instance within a subnet, an IPv4 will be used, okay? So we have three subnets corresponding to three AZ. And so when we went into the EC2 console, I will show you this right now. When we went into the EC2 console and we launched an instance, we're going to do it again, launch an instance, we had to choose the AMI type, we had to choose the instance size, and then we had to choose the instance details. The network was associated to the default VPC. And for the subnet, you have to choose the subnet you want it to be in. And these subnets correspond to AZ and they correspond to the subnets that were created right here. So as an example, if I create an instance in EU West 1A, so I'm going to create that instance, do review and launch, and then launch, and then acknowledge this, our instance is getting created automatically. And if we look at the private IP, 172.31.6.131, this IP is within the CIDR range that has been defined right here. Okay. This is good, so we understand better how it works. And because this is a public subnet, then this is why we were able to connect to our EC2 instance, and this is why our EC2 instance was able to be used as a web server and also install different packages. Okay, so this is good. We understand better now what goes on behind the scenes. So next, what I showed you, told you about was the internet gateway. So the internet gateway here has been created already, and it's attached to one VPC, so a VPC can only have one internet gateway. And this is what allows my EC2 instances in here to get internet access. If I do remove the internet gateway, if I detach it, I won't do it, then I'm not going to be able to access my EC2 instance anymore. And for the get internet gateway to be used, it needs to be used by a route table. So if I go back to my subnet and click on any of these subnets and go to route table, I can see there is a route table associated with it. And if I click on this route table, this route table contains a route in here that says that if you are going within this CIDR, you stay within your local VPC. But if you're going anywhere else, then please use the internet gateway. This is a link to the internet gateway. Well, this means that our instance has a route and within our subnet to the internet gateway, and therefore it is a public subnet and the EC2 instance can access the internet. As I mentioned, we don't have any private subnet in this example because it is a default VPC, but if you wanted to, as an exercise, you could create a subnet. It's more complicated. I do this in my other courses. And then you will need to also define a specific route table. Okay, finally, we are not using them because we don't have any internet, uh, because we don't have any private subnets, but you could create a NAT gateway. And the NAT gateway would be associated with the subnets and would allow your instances in your private subnets to access the internet. Now, this is more advanced. You just need to know what it is at a high level. Finally, to clean up, do not forget to take your instance, right click and terminate it to leave it clean after yourself. That's it. I will see you in the next lecture.